Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a lesson in response to this video uploaded by the beloved brother, all right, the elder Karataza, GMS Vegas sit downs, 144 GA. All right, is his YouTube handle, subscribe and be edified. The title of the video that I'm gonna be responding to is did the Lord saying go teach all nations mean to go preach to actual heathen nations. And it's in response to a TikTok video uploaded, all right, by a Christian. And of course, when you deal with the Christian uh, religion and those who are defenders of the uh, doctrine of Christianity, um, it's always going to be centered around, you know, uh, you know that the Most High is going to save all nations, or we don't have to keep the laws or we can eat what we want to eat. Pretty much outside of those few topics, um, you won't really get anywhere else. And this is where they've continuously uh, fumbled and erred because they don't deal with the volume of the book. A lot of them think that they can uh, start um, the reading and understanding of the Bible in the book of Matthews and... Um, preach this message of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that he's um, here to save the whole world. And um, in this video, as we'll show you, uh, this particular Christian is going into the Greek to deal with a particular word, ethnos, which is very interesting that Christians are now going into Greek and Hebrew words. You got to understand, we came out of the religion of Christianity, okay? And we didn't learn anything about the Bible. It didn't provoke us to uh, repent, okay? It was just something we were doing, okay, out of uh, tradition. And that tradition of the Christian church and all of these Baptists, you know, Pentecostal, all of these churches goes back to the plantation where the slave master all right, used this particular religion to keep us in check, all right, and in a dumbed-down state to where we praised him and looked to him, all right, instead of looking to Yahweh Bashmi Shai and uh, understanding who we were in our duty, all right, as Israelites, which when you bring up anything that deals with the 12 tribes of Israel to a Christian, they automatically get angry, all right, they call you racist or hateful, okay? And they promote this narrative that who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ was sent to save all nations from their sins. Well, all nations weren't under the first covenant. You see, the Bible deals with a particular lineage starting with Adam through Seth, you know, through Noah, through Shem, through our facts at, all the way up to Abraham who had Isaac, who had Jacob, and there was a promise given unto Abraham, all right, that his seed was be as the sand of the sea, all right, and we know according to prophecy, a remnant will return in the latter days to be heirs to the promise and the rights of that land, which is the center of much controversy in this time because that land happens to be Jerusalem, the promised land, the Garden of Eden, you see, and the true children of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, has, through the Holy Spirit, awakened the true believers. And we've been on YouTube, on a, a street corners, and it's caused a stir. And now these Christians are watching us, taking particular points, and now they want to go into the Greek and Hebrew and want to be the authority on the scriptures now, Again, the Bible is dealing with a particular lineage, a particular family, a particular seed line. OK, and that's the narrative of the whole Bible, you see. And when you get into the New Testament. OK, that particular uh, lineage. 
all right, for the most part was associated with being heathen or being Gentiles because of a scattering. And again, this is why you must understand the history to know and understand the reason of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ to redeem that chosen lineage back to the father because they broke that first covenant. Okay, as a matter of fact, Let's start here in the book of uh, Amos, the uh, third chapter, and the first verse, it says, hear this word. Now, as we start here in Amos, a Christian will get angry and say, well, why are you reading, the, you know, the Old Testament? You know, the Old Testament is done away with. No, the Old Covenant is done away with, which is why we have a grace period so that we can be redeemed back to the Father Okay, uh, through faith in Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And ironically, when you go into the New Testament, you know, the Messiah himself and all of the men who were followers of him constantly went into the law, into the, the, the you know, what, the, you know, the Torah, the prophets. You see, because everything that they were doing, all right, was fulfilling what was prophesied to happen as concerning this seed. All right, so this is Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that Yahweh have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I have brought out of the land of Egypt. See, and why did he bring that seed out of the land of Egypt? So that they can be brought into that promised land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in their seed. All right. And although that wasn't the time for us to fulfill, actually return into that land forever. OK, it was concerning the house of Israel. As you as you uh, read that story in the book of Exodus, the Lord clearly says the reason he um, sent Moses and the reason, you know, he did what he did was because he ho he heard the groanings of the Israelites as they were slaves in Egypt. And he remembered the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? So it says here in Amos 3 and 2, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I punish you for all your iniquities. All right? And this word family ties directly to um, this lesson. All right? So the word for family in the Hebrew is masha pacha. Okay? And it just means cl clan, family, tribe, people, nation, species, all right, aristocrats. Now, amongst these clans, tribes, and people and nations in the planet Earth, all right, which according to the Bible, there's 18 nations, all right, of those 18 nations, the Heavenly Father only chose one. You only have I known of all of these particular families. All right. And who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, as we know, this particular family was eventually, you know, led out of Egypt and given a covenant, you know, which is the first covenant that we broke. Um, we needed to be redeemed back to the father because he divorced us. So that was the purpose of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Give me one second here. This is the book of Galatians chapter four and four. It says, so when the, but when the fullness of time was come, the most high sent forth his son made of a woman under the law. All right. Yahweh Shai came and fulfilled the law. You see, he was his, his birth. Okay. His life, everything he did fulfilled the law of Moses, which proves he would have to have came through the seed of a man. See, if he didn't come through the seed of a man, he didn't fulfill the law. So he was made of a woman under the law. And you can get that law that I'm talking about. I believe it's in the book of Leviticus, the 12th chapter. All right, where it deals with, uh, uh, you know, the seed of a Hebrew male child and how to deal, you know, with, uh, a, you know, how a woman is to deal, you know, after you know, she gives birth. OK, so he was made of a woman under the law to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. All right. To redeem them that were under the law. 
See? So he who was under the law? You see? To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Let's look up this word adoptions real quick. Okay? Who with Osea. All right, and just to get to the point, it says that relationship was which the Most High was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations. Again, let's get the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Okay, because remember, we broke that first covenant. Hebrews 9 and 15, and for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament or a new covenant, a new agreement. All right, that by means of death. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who was under the first testament or covenant? The Israelites. That they which are called the Israelites. And the scriptures clearly say in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See that? That they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Okay. Let's get that uh, scripture too real quick and then we'll get the video. Just wanted to make these quick points. So in uh, this is the book of uh, let's get it in um, in the book of uh, Hebrews, the eleventh chapter, and the seventeenth verse says, "By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. That and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called." You see, and Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, and then what happened? Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things to come. See, so the whole Bible deals with our history. The whole Bible was centered around the Israelites. Yet when you bring up the Israelites to Christians, they want to undermine the Israelites and insert what is called replacement theology. See? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when Stephen in Acts the seventh chapter gave the whole history, he was speaking to Israelites about Israelites. All right, which the bulk of them, a lot of them rejected Yahweh Shai. Okay. So then you have the Gentiles who were, who were eventually brought in, all right, outside of the qualifications of the first covenant, but through faith in Yahweh Shai. See, that's what it's all about, but it's all about the Israelites. You see now in this uh lesson um I'm going to play it the title again is saying did the Lord saying go teach all nations mean to go preach to actual heathen all right so let's listen to this Christian and then we'll get some edification and close this lesson out Lord willing we don't take too long because pretty much we always go over this but it's good to continuously um beat these points into powder you know and it also gives edification to the new believers because you may have particulars who've been around and they're like oh they're going into this again well first of all it's not all about you and this thing is bigger than you but there's a lot of newcomers who are leaving christianity who are looking at the controversy surrounding you know kanye west trying to figure things out so it is our job to give them what that living water okay so let's play this video and uh, deal with this Christian. Stop the cat. We're scattered in all nations. You know Christians ain't figured that. And y'all really got to study to show yourself approved. That scripture that he's referencing, the word nations in that scripture comes from the Greek word ethnos, from where we get the word ethnicities. These guys love reading into the scriptures. That verse had nothing to do whatsoever with going to 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. It says, go and make disciples of all nations. That word nations, again, means ethnicities. It comes from the Greek ethnos. Don't take my word for it. Look it up yourself. Anyway, as you were. And there you go, a, 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 an Israelite 
from what it appears. He's he's an Israelite, but he doesn't he he has disdain for the Israelites teaching their people that they're Israelites. All right. And where they are in the planet Earth is a result of a curse where they've been scattered. You see, so we're going to deal with the uh, term ethnos, ethnicity, and uh, ultimately get edification. But um, let's uh, go here um, in the book of uh, Matthew, the 28th chapter in the 19th verse. Now, remember, we uh, read in Amos of all the families of the earth, of all the ethnicities of the earth, you only have I chose. This is why you were punished for your sins. You see, and the Heavenly Father deals with the nation of Israel fast. When we go off, like, we, we, we are immediately punished, whereas the heathen, he allows them to build up. You see, and that's, uh, you know, uh, referenced in the book of Second Maccabees, I believe the sixth chapter talks about that. But um, this isn't the scripture he had, but that term ethnos or ethnicity is in it. But uh, let me look up this scripture real quick as well. Disciples. That may be it. Um, we'll just get this one. Um, in Matthew 28, as Yahweh Shai is uh, speaking to his uh, men. Okay. So this is Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. All right baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and in the Holy Spirit, okay? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And he's with us even unto this day, all right? And um, one thing you have to know and understand is that the Israelites were scattered among the nations, which is why these Christians, you know, they try to detach what's written in prophecy from what's happening in the New Testament. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 64. All right. This was the result of breaking the covenant, which we did break the covenant, right? The nation of Israel, the 12 tribes did break the covenant. And why are Christians so angry at talking points centered around the 12 tribes of Israel in the Bible? When when you get Revelation 21, it's the, the, the kingdom of heaven that's going to be set up on earth is centered around the 12 tribes of Israel. The names of the 12 tribes of Israel, the names of the apostles of the Lamb, okay, the 144, all of that is centered around the kingdom of heaven. So why are they so angry <laughs> when you bring out the 12 tribes of Israel? And just because the 12 tribes of Israel in the New Testament, a lot of them were called heathen and Greeks, in Gentiles, that doesn't take away from the fact that they are Israelites. This is where you all err, not understanding the scriptures, nor do you deal with history. And you damn sure don't want to deal with the Apocrypha. Okay, because that is the only way you're going to get understanding of why the Israelites were called Greeks and heathen and un uncircumcised. If you don't deal with that history, then there is no way you can have that understanding. Now, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 64. All right, which the book of Deuteronomy is the reintroducing of the covenant after the wicked generation who rebelled against the Most High, his angel and Moses and Aaron died in the wilderness after 40 years. So remember, the book of Deuteronomy is the reintroducing of the covenant to that next generation. All right. And remember in this uh, chapter. OK, this these are curses for disobedience. All right. Uh, verse 15 says, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee. Meaning if you break the agreement. All right. If you break the um, the uh, the covenant that all these curses shall come up on thee and overtake thee. So and these curses would follow the Israelites throughout all of their captivities which Daniel the seventh chapter gives you an outline of the various different captivities before 
the Heavenly Father sent his only begotten son, Hamashiach Yahawashah, to do what? Okay. This is uh, Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who have visited to redeem his people. See that? To redeem them that were under the law. That was Yahawashah's purpose. To bring us back to the Father. Okay. Um, outside of the technicalities of the first covenant, but through faith and grace, through grace and faith. All right. It says, and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David, as it was prophesied. You have to go to the history. You have to go to the, the Old Testament to understand where that's written. As he have spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. All right. And that's Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. Okay, and when you go into the scriptures, all right, ultimately there was a promise given unto Abraham. Okay, and Yahweh Shai came to fulfill that. Okay, and that blood that was shed covers the elect so that the deal is sealed. Okay, it is done that he would grant us being delivered out of the hand of our enemies that we might serve him without fear. See? So that was the purpose of Yahweh Shai. It's all right here. But then when you go into that, Christians seem to get mad. Now, going back uh, to this particular uh, curse, this is one of the curses that would happen to the Israelites, Deuteronomy 28 and 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth, even unto the, another, the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, all right? You will become Gentiles, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even of wood and stone. This is why when you deal with the churches that were being set up among these various different nations, you know, where Paul and the, the different disciples were traveling, okay, it was said this, 1 Corinthians 12 and 2, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led, because you have the uh, natural Gentiles, okay, but then you have the Israelites who were scattered among them. Let's see if we can find something right here. See, all you have to do is type in among heathen, among the Gentiles, and so we can get the one in uh, Psalms 136. Speaking of the Israelites, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. Therefore, we became heathen. You see? Psalms 106 and 47. Save us, O Yahweh, our God. Gather us from among the heathen. And that's the promise. He's going to gather us from among the heathen because we were scattered among these heathen. But a remnant, all right, uh, you know, even at the time of Yahweh Shai, you know, after he ascended back, you know, to the, the Holy Spirit, to the Father, and sit down the Holy Spirit, you know, and then Paul, you know, eventually, you know, Cornelius, eventually, all right, salvation was opened up to the Gentiles outside of the first covenant. Because when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he gathered specifically from amongst the Israelites who were what? Keeping the customs, the circumcision. OK, but then it was opened up to the uncircumcision through faith. In Yahweh Shai. You see, and that's a history and a mystery that's all throughout the Bible, but our people don't want to deal with it. Okay? They automatically what? They 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 come up against us. Stop the cap. So this nigga is mad because he's being he he's an Israelite and we're teaching our people that they're Israelites, as if the Christian church did anything for us. And again, the Israelites will be scattered. OK, and when you get precepts, that narrative is 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 uh, spoken about throughout the whole Bible. OK, we would be cast out of the land and scattered. OK, that happened, you know, uh, through these various different captivities. And even, you know, um, after Yahweh Shai, you know, um, ascended back on high. All right. You got to remember the book of Daniel was already written. He already saw the visions of the different captivities we would be in. So ultimately. 
in 70 AD, we would be, you know, banished out of Jerusalem and scattered throughout all of these various different nations. And Jerusalem will be controlled by actual heathen until the time of the actual heathen be fulfilled. Now, um, as you see here, the Israelites will be scattered among all of these various different nations. Okay. And they would serve other gods. That is the Gentile of the New Testament. Now, going back here, Matthew 28 and 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. So they're saying, well, since Yahweh said, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That's dealing with teaching actual heathen. Okay. Again, among the heathen is a narrative you must understand that is in the Bible. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Ezekiel 36 and 24, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you to your own land. That's a promise to the Israelites. But let me get this point here real quick. Galatians 1 and 16, this is Paul speaking, says, To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. See, I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I confer not with flesh and blood, because this was all through the spirit. All right, that he was moved to do this. Okay, so he was preaching his son among the heathen. Why? Because according to a curse, Israelites would be scattered among the heathen. Okay. Yep. Zechariah 8 and 13. And it shall come to pass that as you were a curse among the heathen, and these are all prophecies that have to be fulfilled. O house of Judah and house of Israel, which right now the house of Judah and the house of Israel are among the heathen. So will I save you and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. All right. So we are among the heathen unto this day. Okay. And we're, we're being blessed and brought out of the curse via the Holy Spirit, starting with his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Now, in this verse, go ye therefore and teach all nations, okay, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy and the Holy Spirit. This word, teach all nations, okay, that word that this uh, guy, you know, since Christians are now so uh, uh, adamant about going into the Greek and the Hebrew, they don't really deal with too much Hebrew, but they love to go into that Greek and they love to use Paul as this uh, catalyst, you know, to basically undermine prophecy. OK, and they like to use Yahweh Shai to undermine the Most High's plan. No, Yahweh Shai came to fulfill the Most High's plan for this chosen seed. So you have that word ethnos, which it does mean ethnicity. OK, so. What it means, multitude, whether of men or beasts, associated or living together, a company, troop, swarm, multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. So you have multiple gene, uh, uh, ethnicities, okay, according to the Bible. And the Christian church wants you to believe that none of them matter, according to the story. They even insert the pseudoscience of this world, white, black, you know, red, you know, yellow, Mexican, uh, you know, Chinese, this, that, as if that overrides the actual names of these nations that's in the Bible, which would help us identify them. The Edomites, they say they're done away with, which that's a damn lie because that's the nation that has to fall in order for the kingdom of heaven to be set up. You telling me we in the kingdom of heaven? Okay. It says of the human family, tribe, nation, people, group. All right. In the Old Testament, nation of not worshiping the true God, pagan Gentiles. And our people did become pagans through following the, the, the ways of the heathen. So which ethnicity, which family, which group is the Heavenly Father concerned with in the whole Bible? Paul uses the term for Gentile followers of Hamashiach. Yahweh Shai. Now, what I have here, which I brought this out before, and I'm going to just roll through it a little bit. The etymology of the word Gentile. OK. And this was written by a uh, uh, 
a ish, all right, a, a so-called uh, Jew, all right, who, um, you know, he's of the opinion that he and his people are that chosen seed, but he breaks down his word, and this is one who believes in the New Testament, which, you know, a lot of them don't, but um, we're going to go into the etymology of the word Gentile, all right? It says, throughout our Bible, so when you're reading this, you know, understand that this is a small hat, but ultimately, um, we know and understand that we are the people of the Most High God, which nobody had ever had a problem with these people who are over in the Holy Land doing all manner of abominations, calling themselves the chosen people. See, and they stand on the fact that they're the chosen people. They stand on the fact that they're the descendants of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why they're in that land. You see that? Not one person stood up to them, and they're actually over there. But 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 us merely standing stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and preaching and prophesying has got everybody losing it, even our own people. Anyway, it says throughout our own Bible, the Greek word ethnos is translated as Gentile or as nation. You see, and we see uh, we see that in this scripture here. Go teach all nations. And you see eth ethnos is that word there. All right. It says while Christianity today today interprets the word Gentile as non Jew. That is not what it means. OK. In the Bible. For writers of the Greek Old Testament, Septuagint, and of the New Testament, ethnos meant ethnic group or race. All right. It was most often a reference to our, our ethnic group. See, our people of Israel, the lost sheep whom Yahawashai came to redeem. And he told you himself, I am only here to, to uh, for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, he gathered from amongst the circumcision. All right, and then it was opened up to the uncircumcision, which are ultimately those Israelites who were ultimately raised not as Jews. They were raised as what? Heathen. Just as we are, as right now we're we're scattered among the heathen. And how were we raised? We weren't raised as actual Israelites. We weren't raised in the customs. Therefore, we were uncircumcised. All right. Some of us uncircumcised, you know, in the actual physical penis or some of us were blessed to, you know, our parents got us circumcised. But then the true uncircumcision is of the mind. Meaning our minds. All right. The, 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 the fat wasn't yet cut off. All of the excess which blocked us from the Heavenly Father. It says here. It is sometimes used to refer to other ethnic groups. And this is why you have to be studied and you have to be able to discern when you're reading the scripture who's who is talking about. OK. Because what, what did the scripture say as concerning salvation in the Bible? OK. Isaiah 45. OK, which Christians didn't want to touch the Old Testament. Now they're going into the Old Testament and even trying to insert the heathen into the first covenant. <laughs> all right. But there's various prophecies in the Old Testament. All right. That speak of end time prophecy. So it's no way. Really, it's no way around the truth. All right. You all are just going to continue making these same arguments. And when the spirit jumps on us, we're just going to do videos on it until the heavenly father just completely shuts you all up. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be uh, ashamed nor confounded world without end. See, Israel is going to be uh, uh, saved. OK, and as you can re keep reading. Right here. All right. I'll start at 19, jump down. It says, I, I have not spoken in secret or in a dark place in of the earth. I have not. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. So this all this ain't happening in vain. The seed of Jacob in the latter days would wake up. You see what I'm saying? And seek the Lord. I, Yahweh, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come draw near together ye that are escaped of the nations. You see, because we will be scattered among the nations. 
They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven images and pray unto a God that cannot save. You see, when we were scattered among the heathen, this is what we did. We took part in those those rituals. We took part in their idols. You see? So as it, as it says here, let me just get to the point. Verse 22, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else. Why? Because Israel will be scattered among the ends of the earth. You see? As a matter of fact, when you keep reading, you just get to the point. Verse 25, in Yahweh shall the seed of Israel be justified. All right. And shall glory. All right. And that word for seed. All right. Because the offspring would be here. In the planet Earth, in the latter days, you see, according to prophecy, and we believe that first and foremost through faith, faith, all right, but it's also written, all right, we want second for it to come up, it should be Zerai, all right, which uh, ultimately means um, seed, I don't know what the hell is up with this thing, man. Give me one second. Zerai, seed, offspring, descendants. That's prophecy. That's written. And the scripture cannot be broken. Anyway, let's go back to this uh, excerpt uh, dealing with ethnos. It says, Our people of the lost sheep of Israel, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus came to redeem because they what they broke that first covenant. It says it was sometimes used to refer to other ethnic groups. Whenever you come to the word Gentile or nation in the Bible, try replacing those words with our own ethnic group. You see, the context will make it clear if it refers to other ethnic groups. All right. Mostly. Yahweh Shai and the New Testament writers use the word to mean their own specific ethnic group, the Israelites. Never did they mean all who are not Israelites, you see? And the proof of that, because what people do is they see all and they lose their mind. Well, we'll show you that all doesn't <laughs> mean all nations. Like if I'm talking to all of y'all and I say all of y'all meet me, you know, uh, 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 at, at my house. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to y'all. I'm talking to my, my, who I'm with. I'm not talking to everybody who's listening. I'm talking to those who would apply to. Okay? And let's get an example of that in the book of Hebrews, which is, a, is another disregarded scripture by Christians. All right? Hebrews 8. It's talking about how they broke the, the he's going to make a new covenant. OK, start at six and I'll jump. But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry. All right. By how much he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. See, it's, it's, it's the same people. OK, it's the same God. All right. But it's a new mediator. It's no longer Aaron. We're no longer under the Levitical priesthood. We're no longer justified by being perfect in the law. But through this grace period, faith, the just shall live by faith. And you fulfill the law, all right, through walking in the spirit. That doesn't mean you throw the law away. Okay. It says, um, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place be sought for the second. But finding fault with them. All right. He said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to that covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because in they continue not in my covenant. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them into their hearts, and I will be unto them a God, and they shall be unto me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for all shall know me from least to greatest. See that? All shall know me from least to greatest. Now you'll look at this word all, and this is what a Christian will do. They'll jump here to where it says all, and they'll say, see? And then they'll jump to John 
which always make Christians start at John 14, 3 and 14. All right, when they get John 3 and 16, tell them to start at 14 and break that down. You see, because when you get that, so clearly the all is referring to the house of Israel and the house of Judah are going to know the Lord because they'll all be under a new covenant. John 3 and 16. See, one of the, the their, their favorite scriptures, you know, and also ask them the history. What, what is this chapter talking about? What, what happened earlier in the chapter? Anyway, and you'll get a few who, you know, Gamaliel and uh, what's it? No, no, it wasn't Gamaliel. Um, Nicodemus, who was a Jew. All right. Who ultimately um, needed clarification. See, he was one of those Jews raised in the customs. And a lot of them rejected Yahweh Shai, but a lot of them followed him as well. But right here, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. All right. And he gave his son to this world. All right. That word world is cosmos, which there's many worlds. OK. That whosoever should believe it on him should not perish, but it shall have everlasting life. We just read Israel is going to be saved with an everlasting salvation. But when you go to verse 14, it says right here. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Now, who was the serpent in the wilderness, all right, lifted up for? The Israelites, so that they can stop being bit by the serpent, the serpents who were biting them and, 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 and killing them. They had to look up to this brass serpent Moses was uh, commanded to create. And then when the Israelites looked up to that brass serpent, all right, they were healed. The bites didn't kill them. So just as the serpent in the wilderness, the Israelites were in the wilderness on the way to the promised land, was lifted up, even so must Yahweh Shai be lifted up for the nation of Israel. That's who we look to. All right? He is the one that is lifted up. You see? How this all ties to everything in the Old Testament. Okay? But now Yahweh Shai is sent to redeem us back contrary to the first covenant now let's go back here to this uh uh this uh this writing it says uh this document it says let's see here never did they mean all who are not israelites exactly this is why all of the nations are going to have to learn the laws from the israelites in the kingdom if they were under the first i mean the, the second covenant they wouldn't have to be taught the laws as we just read. But clearly in the Bible, they're going to have to be taught. So why would they have to be taught if they were all under the second covenant? It says Greek lexicon and Greek word studies in the Latin dictionaries, uh, Skeet's Dictionary of Etymology, clearly define the word Gentile and ethnos as race, a tribe, a clan, which we showed you that. All right. The word genos. Okay. You also have a word genos, which means like a gene pool, which gene. All right. It says it's listed as a subdivision. OK. Of ethnos. All right. It is the it is from genos that the Latin word genus. All right. And gens. OK. For the French word gentile. All right. Gentile. And our word gentile come from. See. See. You got to know the, the root words. You got to know these things, man. There is a slight difference between uh, genos and ethnos. Okay. Let's see here. Genos is more specifically racial. All right. While ethnos is more general as an ethnic group which, of course, does include the racial quality. Never does any objective scholar attempt to pervert ethnos to mean all those who are not of the so-called Jewish race, all right, or all those who are not of the Jews. See, the thing is, it's just that you had those who were raised in the customs, the circumcision, and you had those who weren't, who when you look and go into the history, those who are of the circumcision looked at those other Israelites who weren't keeping the laws as heathen. They looked at them as a no people. 
All right. They they pretty much said they were ejected. All right. They can't get back in. Okay, and that was the controversy. It says that is a meaning. So let me read here. It says, never does any objective scholar attempt to pervert, all right, ethnos to mean all who are not of the Jews' race. That is a meaning exactly opposite from its true meaning. Yet, that is the general accepted meaning by the word Gentile by modern Christianity. Okay? <laughs> It is only in recent years that this perverted meaning has become commonplace. At the time of the 1611 King James translation, the word Gentile meant race, tribe, clan. All right. So the word Gentile was properly used for that 1611 translation. But now that the meaning has been radically changed, it is not a proper word for translations today. All right. It says the perverted coloration of this word's definition has had a tremendous influence on the character of Christianity in the world today, which is why you see these people constantly coming up against us. You see, and they weren't going into none of this until they saw us. You see, but then you, you had particular, uh, you know, scholars and particular demons like, you know, the vocab Malone and where he comes from and his you know John Calvin and all of them which even John Calvin understands what we teach all right and he agreed that in first peter's 1 and 1 let's get that real quick John Calvin agrees that in first peter's 1 and 1 we have the document all right and I did a lesson on it but here's here's an example First Peter's one and one, Peter, an apostle of Yahawashai, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto the obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Yahawashai. That blood was sprinkled for who? The Israelites. Acts five and twenty nine. You see, so. Here it is. They like to say that these particular churches that were being raised up were actual heathen. But here, Peter is writing unto the strangers scattered. Let's look up the word scattered. Okay. And those strangers that were scattered were Israelites of the diaspora via the curses who were waking up. Diaspora. All right. A scattering, a dispersion of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations of the followers of Yahweh Shah scattered abroad among the Gentiles. See, these are Israelites. Okay. James uses the same word, a servant of God. James one and one, James, a servant of the most high and, uh, and of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. Greeting. See, so why is he writing a letter to the scattered dispersed Israelites among the Gentiles, but then all of the other letters are to the actual heathen. No, it doesn't make sense. John 7 and 35. Let's get this real quick. It says, and then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? There you go. Okay. They were likened unto Gentiles because they had what fell away to those idols, man. Let's get this in the NLT. All right. It says the Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement. Where is he planning to go? They asked. Is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews and other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. Okay. Which the Israelites became Greeks. All right. And that, that takes you back to the history of. In the book of Maccabees, which we'll just touch on it real quick, just for the sake of anyone watching who doesn't know, you have to go to the Apocrypha to get the understanding of why would an Israelite be called Greek? Why would an Israelite be called heathen or Gentile? Well, they learned the works of those Gentiles, which made them what? Uncircumcised. That's why you see an emphasis on the uncircumcision and the circumcision in the Bible, you see, in the New Testament. Um, let's get that real quick. 
because it's like, well, there's this emphasis on Greeks, but you had what seventeen? Uh, you had you had a whole bunch of you. You got other nations as well. So why is it just a focus on the Greeks? What about the Hamites? What about the Moabites? Why Greeks? Because the Israelites, when they were amongst the Greek captivity, had became Hellenized and followed the ways and works of the Greeks. And the same thing happens till this day. Our people are in this uh, particular society, Babylon the Great, which follows a lot of the ways of the ancient Greek, uh, uh, Greco-Roman Empire. And what are they doing? They're, they're joining Greek fraternities the Olympics and doing everything that they were doing back then. Let's get the book of first Maccabees of the first chapter. Okay. Because our people forsook the Holy covenant. Okay. This is first Maccabees one. Let me just get to the point. One and eleven in those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, because they were scattered among the heathen, for since we departed from them we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Then certain people who were so forward therein went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen, whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem. The gymnos, gym gymnos means naked, that's where you get the word gym. They were exercising naked according to the customs of the heathen and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Okay? They became uncircumcised. Now, a lot of them were already circumcised, so how could they become uncircumcised? Well, Romans 2 and 25 tells you if you break the law or if you're keeping the law, you're circumcised. If you break it, you're uncircumcised. Well, who was the law given to in the first place? The Israelites. So the Israelites became uncircumcised by doing what? Okay, following the religion, okay, of the Greeks. See? <laughs> Which was an order at that time. Okay? To, to stop keeping the Sabbath. All right, right here, verse 43. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Who? Antiochus, which was a, of the Greek empire, the Seleucid in particular. Okay, one of Alexander, the Greek's generals, which all of the, the history of Alexander and what he did, that's in the Bible. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So this is why... Those Israelites in the New Testament, those Gentiles were turning away from those idols because through the teachings of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, they were brought back in through faith. All right. But they, they put off those idols. They didn't keep following those idols. They put them off. Which is what? The keeping of the law. So there's a, the, 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 you know, through faith. We're saved, but there's particular things you have to do. Faith without works is dead. Okay? While we're not saved by the law, we're saved through faith in Yahweh Shai. If we just say, well, we're saved through Yahweh Shai so I can keep uh, bound to idols, I can keep you know, uh, being a flaming you know, alphabet, you know, I can, I can keep eating what the hell I want to eat. You're not justified. Clearly in Acts 15, when the controversy of these Gentiles who were coming into the church came in and they were like, well, damn, you know, um, we can't make them keep the full law. So what do we do? They came to the conclusion, all right, that those Israelites from among the heathen, okay, as a matter of fact, real quick, we're going to uh, tap on that. We're going to tap in on that, like Jake say, tap in. <laughs> it's Acts 15, which is that's why all of these letters were written by Paul because of this particular controversy. So all of the letters you see in Colossians, Galatians, you know, um, Ephesians, all of those letters were written after this council in Acts 15 because there were particular men amongst the church saying what? Acts 5, 15 and 5 to these Gentiles being raised up 
But there raised, rose up a certain sect of the Pharisees which believed. They believed on Yahawashai, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and commanded them to keep the law of Moses, which, you know, it was, it was you, you can't force a newcomer, all right, who's putting down idols coming into the faith, all right, to, to be hardcore in the law as soon as they come in, okay? Eventually, some of them got circumcised, you see? But basically, even without being circumcised, the Heavenly Father can be dealing with you. And Abraham himself was the perfect example of that because, all right, he was, on, he was 99 before he was circumcised. But when the Lord came to him, I forget how old he was, uh, but he, you know, maybe 40s, all right? Salaki, if I, I, don't, I don't know the age, but I don't, I'm not even going to look it up right now. But when the Lord was dealing with him, his faith, and he was justified while he wasn't even circumcised yet, which cuts this notion that these Pharisees who believed on Yahweh Shai were coming in, the spirit they were coming in. So the, the order from this council that was at Jerusalem was what? Acts 15 and 19, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned unto God. Who was among the Gentiles? Israelites, scattered, dispersed. But we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So clearly what you eat, these are Gentiles. This is the, this, these are laws. See? So it was like, look, start them off here. But as your faith grows, you're going you're gonna to naturally start to keep more laws. So you abstain from the pollution of idols, which all of the behaviors that give the, the, give the, make the most high, give us the side eye and angry, it's all tied to idol worship. You see what I'm saying? So stay away from the pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. You see? So you're not justified in eating a bloody steak. Because Jesus died on the cross. Even right here, these are laws that they're telling these new, freshly converted Israelite Gentiles to keep. This is where we'll start them off at. And then as they grow in the grace and glory of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, they're going to naturally start to keep the laws, man. All right? To the best of their ability. But you're not justified by that. But again, if you're seeking to just be justified by Yahweh Shai alone, Let's get that in Galatians, the sec second chapter. Or is it Galatians, the, the first chapter? Maybe Galatians 2. Real quick, and then we'll um, finish off that article, get a few other things, and close it out. All right. This is uh, Galatians 2 and 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai, even we have believed in Yahweh Shai, those who were of the circumcision, that we might be justified by the faith of Amashiach and not by the works of the law. See, but remember, the law was only given to Israel. You see? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if we seek to be justified by Hamashiach, we ourselves are, only found, are, are also found sinners. If therefore, is therefore Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the minister of sin? God forbid, if I build again the things which I have destroyed, so if I go back to the bowing the idols and eating blood, I make myself a transgressor, a transgressor of what? The law. You see, so you, you're not justified by the law, but then that's where balance comes in. You still have to keep the law. Paul tells you we established the law. How are you going to say divine instruction doesn't matter? But again, the law is all centered around the Israelites. And the first covenant was broken, so the, 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 the elect are going to be brought in through faith. Anyway, going back to this word Gentile and ethnos, you see. Let's see here. I'm going to start here at this paragraph right here. It says, the, the perverted coloration of this word, ethnos, a nation, Definition has a tremendous has had a tremendous influence on the character of Christianity in the world today. Instead of recognizing Yahweh Shai's statements that he came for none except the lost sheep of the house of Israel, 
as a, a, a specific ethnic or racial group, the church now teaches that the Messiah came for all others too, which is a damn lie. This misunderstood misunderstanding of Gentile is so pervasive and overriding that Christians willingly overlook the Messiah's clear and explicit statement regarding the Israelites, the one specific ethnic group for who he came, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and they do, what do they insert? Replacement theology. <laughs> okay. Christians offer the, the New Testament, New Covenant to all peoples of the world by ignoring the specific word of God in Hebrews 8 and 8, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. All right. It is explicit that the new covenant belongs to the descendants of Jacob and not to everyone. Christians charge forth to save the world, ignoring the fact that the Messiah told his disciples he wouldn't speak clearly to the general public because they might understand and repent and be forgiven. It is no wonder that the Most High must hide the higher truths from the Christians. All right. They are willing to take heed to the Messiah's instructions. And he's right. Okay. Old Testament history is a story of one specific ethnic group, a race of people whom God nourished and guided and protected with obvious lack of concern for any of the neighboring races except his stern warnings against mixing with them. See, he always told us to abstain from their ways. All right. And he gave us laws on how to deal with their women as concubines. But it was centered around those women of those heathen nations bowing to our God. Before they can be a concubine, they couldn't forward their God. They couldn't live after their customs no more. They had to live as an Israelite under uh, uh, the bondage of a concubine which is a wife through bondage. All right. It says when the Messiah came, he stated explicitly that he came to none except this specific group. There is no inconsistency or ambiguity regarding this until now that we have the modern definition of Gentile as all others than Jews, the very opposite from his true meaning. Okay. So, who has permitted the change of the meaning of the word Gentile? Western Christianity has done it. Why? Because the European Christians have not realized, all right, that they are the 12, you know, and, and this is the garbage Esau is going to come with, okay? But really, you have a battle between the regular everyday Edomite, the, the, the Christian Edomite, and the, the Amalekites, the so-called Jew, because the so-called Jew all right, who when you look up his history, he was the child of a concubine. And in inheritance rights, the child of a concubine is looked down upon. And here it is, Amalek has all of the gold, he has all of the, the resources, he gets all of the attention, and he left out you Western Christian Edomites. So y'all are going back and forth exposing one another, and you have access to particular things, so we go into it, and use it for our benefit because we're the true Israelites. Okay. I'm going to just jump to this uh, part here and then I'll end it off. It says scholars have done us a disservice by permitting the corruption of the definition, making Gentile mean all non-Jew races of the world. All the races of other than the true Israel are not the lost sheep of Yahweh Shai. They are not all evil. And should not be abused or mistreated. And, and those so-called Jews don't believe that. Go into that Talmud that they really believe in. Okay? It says, and they can share in the rich blessings of God, children. No, they can't. They can be taught. That is the blessing of the heathen is that they're going to be uh, taught the laws by a righteous people. It says, if they recognize the true God and, and his Messiah as king and Lord, and they're going to have to do that. The heathen nations are going to have to bow the knee and acknowledge Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, but they can never become the house of Israel. That is impossible. The fact is, this fact isn't something to be upset about. Can the pot say to the uh, potter, why have you made me thus? He's quoting out of Romans 9. 
So let's just read this real quick. The following are some definitions. Ethnos is the Greek word translated into English as Gentile or nation. The word was commonly used to one's own uh, uh, ethnic family group. One might say, go tell all the ethnos, I'll meet with them tomorrow evening. Other connotations would include such meanings as that ethnic group, those ethnic groups, or other ethnic groups, and so on. The use of singular or plural in the context makes it pretty easy to determine what the writer means when he goes into ethnos. So when you go back to this word ethnos, Yahweh Shai said go and teach all the ethnicities, all of the, the ethnos, teaching them to be baptized, all right? Which, who, who, who was John's baptism taught to? Okay, it was taught to Israelites. As a matter of fact, real quick, let's get Acts. Matter of fact, I'll leave that there. Let's go here. Let's get Acts, the 13th chapter. I mean, it, it said clearly when John the Baptist was born, many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. But Christians are still, disregard that. John Was John the Baptist preaching the, the heathen? No. Acts 13 and 24, when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Okay, he preached to all the people of Israel. Okay, Let's see if it goes into Luke. Yep. No, I don't go into it, but he was preaching to the Israelites because his birth, because he was going to be the forerunner Okay, to 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 preach of Yahweh Shai's coming. And what was he gonna do? Luke one and fifteen, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. See? John the Baptist was preaching to Israelites. You see, but real quick, this word ethno, so you'll see it. And we're going to go to a few uses of it. Um, let's go. I mean, it's, it's so many scriptures. We're up, Acts 10 and 45. And they of the circumcision, which believed the circumcision raised in the customs, but they didn't deny Yahweh Shai. Or either they denied him, but then repented. In Acts, the second chapter, after they were cut to the heart by Peter's uh, sermon, they of the circumcision which believed were astonished and as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles, upon the ethnicity, upon the scattered Israelites was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. See. Acts 10 and 35, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Because amongst these nations would be the Israelites. So it's not subject, because what he was saying here is it's not subject to the fact that you were born in Jerusalem. It's beyond that. But in but but amongst the, the every nation where the this ethnicity is scattered, if you work righteousness, you'll be accepted with him. Let's go to a real quick Acts ten. And 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. It's not based upon you being born of the circumcision or born in Jerusalem, you know, which you have an advantage. But th that, that don't make you any uh, uh, closer to the most high or not. It's through faith in Yahweh Shai. So he's no respecter of persons. All right. But in every nation. See. Because that seed would be scattered amongst all nations. He that feared him and worked righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching, preaching peace by Yahweh Shai, he is Lord of all. See? <laughs> that word, I say, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Who was he preaching to? We just saw it. So this word, ethnos, all right, as you see it, being used in various different scriptures. He's a light, see? 
it's another scripture that they use. Acts 13 and 47. For so the Lord hath commanded us, saying, I have set thee as a light to the ethnos, to the Gentiles. But it's the ethnos, to that ethnicity who would uh, uh, wake up through the preaching of the word. See? And the circumcision kept persecuting Paul and Barnabas and the true followers of Yahweh Shah. So they were like, we're going to turn to 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 these Israelites who are on fire and fervent to hear what we're preaching. You know? So, I mean, and you have to like like the like the guy was saying, you have to be able to, you know, discern, you know, whether the scripture you're reading is talking about actual Gentiles. But as you can see here, Paul was what? He he was set to preach among the Gentiles. So, yeah, the word means, you know, different ethnicities. But which ethnicity is the Lord dealing with in the Bible? We already brought that to you. Okay. Yep, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Yahweh Shai. And see, Abraham was uncircumcised, but yet he was a friend of the Most High through faith. So that links us to Abraham. That links the Gentiles to Abraham, which Abraham was of a specific lineage. He was one of the sons of God. Okay? So let's get this real quick. <laughs> the Gentiles are going to be, what, fellow heirs of the promise. All right? Which the promise was to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? Ephesians 2 and 11, wherefore remember that being in times past called Gentiles in the flesh. Hold up this damn thing, man. Ephesians 2 and 11, wherefore remember that ye being in times past, all right, Gentiles in the flesh by the things you were doing who were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. So the circumcision, we're talking down on these Israelites saying that they couldn't be brought back in. That at that time you were without the Messiah being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and stranger from the covenants of promise. Now, who are the covenants promised to? So, uh, pretty much going back here, I mean, he just goes through uh, Genos, you know, uh, goes to some uh, more examples of Ethnos, um, as you can see here. But um, pretty much the whole Bible is dealing with the uh, the chosen seed, you know, and Jake is going to do whatever they can to um, fight, you know, for plantation Christianity to stay alive. All right. But it's uh, it's already failed. The true Israelites are awakening via the uh, promise given in Holy Scripture that the remnant of Israel would arise so that uh, ultimately they, which we believe through faith and prophecy that we are of that number, we are of that seed, Lord willing, we're chosen, but um, to be heirs to the promise of that land, you know. So, I mean, um, there's more we can go into, but I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you all were edified. On to the next. Shalom.